uh, in the news this morning. Some people using Leamington Shopping Park say they've been given unfair parking fines after their visit. Signs around the complex clearly state that drivers cannot return to the area within an hour of having left it. Some shoppers, though, claim they've been fined £85 from simply moving their car from one space to another. BBC CWR Sally Johnton has been to meet Carol Ashfield, one of the people who received one of these fines through the post. I came in because my car needed some ad blue. So I parked over there in the bay for Halfords. I went in, bought the ad blue, um, put it in. Man in the shop told me to go and drive round for a few, like 20 minutes, half an hour to see if the light went out and then to come back, which I did, again into the Halfords Park in Service Bay and uh, the light hadn't gone out so I had to get some more Ad Blue and put that in again and then I, I, I went home and then quite a while afterwards I received a parking fine notice in the post which I was hor- horrified, shocked did you actually leave the complex when you were driving round, when Halfords told you to go drive round? Did you leave this site? No. So you stayed on Leamington Retail Park the entire time that you were driving? Yes, yes. And so how do you feel that you came here to have some work done on your car? Somebody who works on the site told you to drive round. You stayed on the site and yet you received a parking fine. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's disgusting, actually. I was just lost for words because it was such a shock. Uh, you're given four hours, I believe, to stay on the site. But it appears that even if you move from the parking bay that you're in, that comes into action that you've left the area. Have you been in touch with the people that run the car parks and the people that sent you your fine? No, not at all. What would you say to them if you were to be in touch with them? I'd be very angry, as I I imagine a few people would be. I would ask them for full video footage. What are you going to do now? Because the fine is quite high. We're looking at one of the signs here, which says it talks about the four hour max stay. um, And then it tells you that the terms and conditions apply. And if you don't abide by them, then you you get an £85 fine. So I assume that it's the £85 fine that you've received. Oh, you've got it with you? Yes. Okay, here it is. It says, as per the signage, there is no return of one hour, zero minutes. And the first visit says you were here for 14 minutes. You departed at 1.30. And then you had a second visit when you arrived at 1.55. Where does it... Oh, yep, £85. I can't even think about it. Because I'm 70. uh, And I have my pension. And I just live on my own. So uh, I can't even afford this at the moment anyway. Even if I wanted to pay it, I just don't have the funds to have ridiculous fines like this coming through. Had I left the car park, that would be fine. I would understand, but I I, I just did what I was asked because I'm not a mechanic. I won't be coming here again. Definitely not. That's Carol, uh, and I know how she feels. Uh, very familiar uh, with the Shires Retail Park. Those of you that know it, on the Big Island there on the outskirts of Leamington, by the McDonald's and the Aldi uh, and uh, what have you. And uh, visit it quite a lot with my kids and uh, quite often. I'm, I'm very familiar with the Halfords uh, as well. I've had my, my car service there and uh, bought some bike parts from the Halfords. So know exactly uh, what Carol's done and how she's gone about that at the Shires. Now, the people that run... Uh, the parking at the Shires are called Parking Eye. Uh, we uh, asked them to come on the programme this morning. They sent us a statement uh, with reference to Carol's uh, particular set of circumstances saying that the guidance, they say, advises customers 
at the retail park that they are entitled to a four-hour maximum stay with no return within one hour. The rules are in place to prevent long-stay parking abuse and ensure that spaces are available for customers visiting the retail park. What we would add that Parking Eye operates a BPA, British Parking Association, audited appeals process, which motorists can use to appeal their parking charge. Notice, if anyone has mitigating circumstances, we would encourage them to highlight this as part of their appeal. So uh, that's what the people responsible uh, for uh, the parking at the Shires Retail Park have to say. What should you do, though, if you think you've received an unfair parking fine? Scott Dixon is the complaint resolver and is live with us this morning on CWR. Morning, Scott. Good morning, Phil. Thanks for coming on uh, this morning. Uh, hopefully there you heard Carol. Uh, and did, you, heard, yeah. you heard Parking Eye's response uh, to that. What do you make of this case? Is this uh, this unusual? Is, uh, do, do you hear a lot about these? Yeah, I hear a lot about it, Phil. And it, the first thing to remember is that it, private parking operators cannot fine you. Uh, all they do is merely issue an in invoice for an alleged breach of contract for parking on private land. And Park and I are one of the worst firms for this. And what's happened in Carol's case is what's called a, it's a double dip, where the ANPR cameras are deliberately set up to catch motorists out with flawed entry and exits, you know, um, snapshots. Yeah. And I've looked at the signage, and the, the signage isn't that clear. And you need to be provided... You know, the signs need to provide motorists with sufficient guidance to make an informed decision. Right. And you, you can't ignore these invoices. There's parking... I was going to say, they can't issue a parking fine, but they've issued an invoice. So yeah. what, what, does that, what does that mean to Carol and people who get one of these? They, they've still got to pay up. Yeah, well, you don't have to pay up, uh, but equally you can't ignore these invoices because Park and I will take it to the small claims court and you'll end up with a county court judgment recorded against you. Uh -huh. um, and... It may not worry Carol too much in that regard, but for those younger than Carol, it would wreck your credit rating and ability to get loans, phone contracts and mortgages. Yeah. And don't be intimidated by the legalese jargon and threats because that's part of their money-making strategy to extort money from you. So what Carol needs to do is appeal to, well, speak to Halford in the first instance. Right. And try to avoid um, speaking to Park and I, uh, if you can, but speak to Halfords because they should be able to get this cancelled um, straight away. Right. And if they say they can't, uh, push back and say, well, if it was for staff or the manager, you know, they, I'm sure you would be able to get it cancelled, you know. Yeah. And so so, 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 so Halfords would be able, would... Um, contest yeah. a fine if it was for a member of their own staff or their management, and that's what that's I'm what sure you're saying. Would. Right, I mean, okay. if the manager got a, uh, one of these invoices, you know, these parking tickets, I'm sure um, they would arrange to have it cancelled. And right. they can't get, they can't do it, you know. Uh, identify the staff member that that she dealt with as right. a witness who can testify the version of events. If you if um, you if you don't get anywhere with that though, Scott, uh, are there other ways you can appeal this? Yeah, um, she will. She would need to appeal to Park and I if if she couldn't get any headway with that. But nine times out of ten, if not more, uh, Park and I will reject uh, the first appeal because that's part of their money making. You know, they've got standard templates which they use to reject most appeals. Yeah. But what you can do is request what's known as a poplar code. P O P L A. Yeah, that's right. parking on private land appeals, which is the. Um, independent appeal service just request a poplar code uh, um, in your first appeal so it can be escalated to an independent appeal service at their expense and always appeal as keeper because they don't know who the driver is and, yeah. and appeal on multiple points so you know look at the uh, appeal on the fact that the signage is unclear and the fact that she hasn't left uh, the complex so there's no breach of contract. Yeah, she's not let, gone out and come back in again. She's just moved a car from one space, one space yeah, to another. Right. So, so she can appeal on that, on that as well. What about? Uh, I mean, again, some cars might have dash cam yeah. uh, facilities. That that would all be admissible as evidence as well, would it? Yeah, yeah. Use dash cam footage. Um, your Google tracker on your phone. You know, um, if you've got a tracker 
camera on your phone, which can be used as evidence uh, to prove that you haven't left the complex. Uh, passengers who can testify what's happened, receipts with time stamps, and staff members as part of your evidence. And decisions at the tribunal at Poplar are based on the balance of probabilities. So that means that it's up to Park and I to prove their case rather than for you to disprove it. And this is an unregulated industry and a very profitable one at that. But don't be intimidated and don't feel as though you have to pay it because it's not a fine, it's just an invoice. Um, So put it into perspective. Scott, got to leave it there, but thank you for your help. Scott Dixon, uh, author of the book How to Complain, The Consumer Guide to Cancelling Parking Tickets and Winning Pothole Claims. Uh, very useful to know. Uh, that. If you want to uh, look up Scott's book, it's on uh, Amazon. Do, uh, do go and uh, check that one out. But uh, hopefully there's some advice for you, if like Carol and uh, many others who have been hit.